Hello and welcome back if you are back and welcome if you are new we are going to be painting this honeycomb today we're using watercolors metallic paints and we're adding some lines so we jump right off and we are wetting our page this is to let the paint disperse and do whatever it wants to do and then I am jumping right in and adding some splatter splatter is actually one of my favorite techniques and one of the favorite things that I like about watercolor and I am here just adding some yellows a little bit of a brown and after that I start just moving the paint around I mainly use water for this and it can be it can be from your dirty water jar or it can be from your clean water jar I I usually don't mind using my dirty water jar because it, it already has a little bit of paint and after this I'm just going to start doing my honeycombs I am using for my watercolors I am using the Dr. PH Martins line this is the radiant concentrated watercolor I really like this painting specific because it is very very vibrant it is it is nice to use and it usually like because it is already liquid for me it's a little bit easier to do loose kind of paintings loose kind of things so here I'm using just a mix of yellow and a little bit of brown And mainly what I'm doing is that I'm doing the outline first then I am starting to move that same paint with a little bit of water I my page is still a little bit wet which helps to net to not get that um, rigid lines if as you can see on my top left side it's already starting to spread and it's starting to merge with the one that it's on the diagonal and I really don't mind my paintings kind of merging together because I think it's a really cool effect and it's a, a, a really cool thing that you can achieve with watercolor part of what I like watercolor is that sometimes you can have this on um, this way of not knowing how it's gonna work you every time that I go in to make a painting it's very rare that I know how it's actually going to come out because watercolor just likes to move around it likes to do whatever it wants to do and I think that part of why so many paintings done with watercolor are so unique it's because even if I were to try to do this same painting following the exact same steps I won't get the exact same result so if you're following along and you're doing your own cute honeycomb it's gonna be your own unique honeycomb and I think that's the magic of it I think that's really cool and I think that's what makes painting and art and watercolor so special and so fun to me Thank you. 
Once I have my honeycomb painted, I started adding some shadows and what I started doing is that I started adding shadows to just the parts that connect with other parts of the honeycomb. And for this I just used another shade of another shade of brown, which of course I will always um, put this put everything that I use in down in my description box. So if you ever want to try with the same colors, you are more than welcome to try them with the same colors. here we're just using basically the same technique we used for the honeycomb. I'm just adding the shadows to one I'm, I'm adding the pigment to one part and then I'm just moving what I can with just water. And the whole reason that I added these shadows is just because I wanted to add some kind of depth to whatever the parts of the honeycomb were connected. Um, so I think that added a nice little effect because also this with watercolor as you keep adding colors you are also most of the time reactivated, reactivating what's underneath. So because my page, I didn't let it completely dry, these colors are interacting with each other. And now we're adding some more splatter now that my, most of my paper is has dried. And I decided after I saw my completed honeycomb, I decided to add some metallic details and for this one we're as always using our Van Gogh watercolor metallic paints and this is kind of a copper kind of yeah it's kind of a copper color it's a really fun color but I was very sad to see that the camera was not picking it up as much as I would have loved it. For these outlines I'm using a flat brush it's a very tiny flat brush you can also use any kind of round brush that it's uh, tiny you can also use a liner brush i just picked the flat brush because to be pretty honest because it was the it was the closest one that i had um, but you can use any kind of brush to achieve the same the same effect Now the way that I chose the way that I chose to go about this was that as you can see I just connected them the when the ones that were connected but I didn't want to enclose the whole honeycomb because part of why I really liked it is because the paint kind of got crazy and feathered 
and do everything the paint wanted to do so I still wanted to to keep some of that now I went ahead and I added some gold metallic on the inside part of the honeycomb and this was more to add a little bit of structure on those parts that were not connecting with any other parts And now I'm finishing it with more gold paint splatter. Most of my page is really dry at this point and it didn't, as I wanted and was expecting, it didn't go crazy, which was great. And now I'm just finishing it up with some lines. This is with an archival pen and it is 0.3. And again, I am going on this part, I am going closer to where I put my gold. And this is just to create a little bit of structure to add some fun lines there and to add something different to this quite limited palette. I really only used three colors and then the two metallics for the details. We just add some fun dots and I only limited this to the inside of my honeycomb I didn't want to add any black dots around my page I thought that with all of the other colors it was looking fun already so I didn't need them on the outside and my friends this is it the end of my project I it was a really fun project I've been thinking about making honeycombs for the whole week you can see a more detailed version here and thank you so much for coming again to see my video and i'll see you next week